So, what is the craziest, most fun thing to draw, Kieran? Hmm. I don't know. I thought about this question. <laughs> I really don't know. But I'd probably say that birds are really up there. Birds are just... I don't know, you can't really go wrong with a bird, you know, you start getting into all the diddly the watsons and, and everything can be fun and funky. So, I think today, the best thing for us to do is to draw a bird. So today's drawing is going to be some kind of a crazy thing. Let's have a look and see what kind of bird we draw. Shall we have a look? Okay, so welcome back. I've been asked to draw something fun and funky. What is the most fun and funky thing you can draw? So, birds. Birds are just, I don't know, there's something something magical about a bird. Because you can really never go wrong with a bird. So, if you ever want to draw something and you're a little bit unsure of what they even look like, draw a bird. Because... They always look right, you know, they always look great. So I don't know, I'm going to go for some, some kind of bird. And I really have no idea what this bird is going to look like. But, it's going to be fun. I can feel it. This is going to be a fun and funky bird. So let's just get started. Ooh, what a beautiful line to start with. Let's just keep pulling that line down. Let's give him a real big beak. You know, one of the one of the first kind of interesting birds that comes into my mind. Um, I, I can't really remember the name of it. I think they're called a crane bird. And it has this sh shoe bill, maybe it's called. It's got this huge big head and it, it's always kind of bowing to people. What a crazy looking bird that is. I really want to kind of give this, this beak a nice, big, thick, kind of chunky feeling to it. Big eyes going on in there. See, that's the thing, you can kind of just have fun with it. And you've got to have fun with it, you know, you've got to, you've got to really kind of explore all the possibilities with your drawing when you're doing these. Mm. That nib's beginning to die. Not very happy to see that. He put that nib in there yesterday. Already he's starting to kind of go all a little bit do lally on me. That's not good. So we can have another eye over here. smile coming up there. Lovely. Now, I don't really know too much about birds. To be honest, most things I learned from birds, I learned from the postman. Every time I see the postman and say hello to him, He's always kind of saying, oh, did you see a red-crested flimmigigigigan? And I'm like, no. Like, wow. There was one of them flying over our, our town last night. 
you have a look out for one and I'm like what does it look like and he's got the full breakdown on every single bird around and some people are obsessed with birds and it's you can see why because some of them are just incredible you know Well, I hope you can see I haven't added any teeth yet. <laughs> I can hear you guys saying, oh, he's going to add teeth in a minute. There's something beautiful about the way ink just pops like that. I'm going to give it some nice kind of big feathery jowls. Lovely. Do the same on this side. I think on my shop I, I put up one of my favorite drawings, which was the the dozy bird. I think I made a cup from him and everything. I was just like, oh, I just was. It was for it was for an indent. It was just like the, the above the title in one of my books, and I I just wanted something like a bird or something like that to kind of sit above the title. And when I drew that, I was like, oh, it's. I was so pleased with that. It was just. One of those type of times when you draw something, you just think, oh, that'll be a classic. That's going to be something I'm going to love for a long time. No. Kind of giving him a little, a little kind of shaved sides to him like there. So I can see, I can see the, um, hair better or the top of the head better okay this nib is really dying you don't want to play with me anymore nib mm, no dead Dead, dead, dead. What about you? Let's try you. I got too many nibs that just get exhausted from all the fun and, and games. <laughs> all the fun and games, yes, say. Eh? Lovely. Cool. He's a real kind of punky bird, isn't he? Birds have got these kind of like long, thin, strange little tongues to them.
And let's just see if I can get some little, little bit of shading going on. My camera still running. Yes, indeed. And I have forgotten to put up my my um, speed one. Silly boy. Oh, the TikTok people will kill me. How many times I've forgotten to do this now? Far too many times. have I got here don't be too hard on your nibs okay <laughs> that one seems to be bending as well what's going on give me some little details on the neck just to make it stick out a little bit from the from the beak, lovely. on the neck birds always look so lovely when they've got little ruffles on the neck I don't know too much about birds though that's uh, to my shame I should should be a lot more versed especially with birds because I I do love to draw strange and exotic birds they are always such a beautiful subject thinking I should give him a, a kind of a thin and fat body I didn't mean thin but fat I didn't mean that I meant kind of like starting thin and going fat like a pear you know Today. Look at that, look. How are you supposed to draw with nibs like that? Okay, 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 let's find a different one. Let's get some nice long. feathers to him <gasps> oh my god what is going on today it's only a little bird that we're drawing come on come on nibs 
Stick with me. He's a crazy fun thing. That's what we should call him. We should call him the crazy fun thing, shouldn't we? <laughs> the crazy fun thing bird. It's lovely drawing all the feathers and stuff like that, you know. please that's already four on this one dear, 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 dear. let's see where my paintbrush is I'm gonna have to put some I'm gonna have to put some lines in there somewhere <laughs> That's really nice. Lovely, 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 lovely. feathers that's the beautiful thing with birds they're always kind of in balance you know they got they got these beautiful tail feathers that come up just to kind of keep everything pretty you know Cool. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. on his chest beautiful oh it's so nice isn't it it's just so beautiful when a drawing just works you just feel that excitement coming inside you know you just feel like this warm glow I almost kind of feel like he should be sitting on a branch or something, you know? That's the other wing there. Let's put a little bit of weight to that line. Lovely. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna touch up a little bit there. Oh, no. Beautiful, really, that's so beautiful. Let's just get a little bit of decoration around there. Oh, it's so nice. I love that, I love that. Right, let's just try and get this going on here. I've got this feeling that I got this feeling that he's like sitting on a branch or something, you know? 
So I could draw the legs there, but I think like the the legs would just feel a little bit kind of not as pretty. If I just get a little bit of roughs going on there. And these big, big uh, eagle type claws to him, you know. Lovely. Lovely, getting some wrinkles on the on the on the talons there. Lovely. I think my 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 nib here is just hanging on. Let's just give it a squeeze. See if I can save it. Beautiful. I love those feet. Look at them. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I'm going to use the brush here though, because I want the, the, the twig to kind of have a nice, nice big realistic kind of girth to it, a thickness to it. Lovely. Oh yes. Lovely. We can get some decoration there just give it a branch feeling to it oh I love that That's so nice. You can put a couple of clouds up there. Isn't that beautiful to draw birds? Isn't it just so, so refreshing for the brain? Beautiful.
That is a beautiful, fun, crazy thing on <laughs> resting on a branch, miles up on a tree somewhere. Yeah, uh, that that I'm really really pleased with that one. What do you think? What do you think of my crazy wild thing? Do you think you can give this bird a, a name? Oh, you guys are so good at names. Come on. You've got to give me a name for this one. Give me a name for my bird. Beautiful. Oh, that's so nice. Hey, see him washing my brushes as well. There is our beautiful, crazy, fun thing bird. <laughs> Sitting in a tree, looking cool and sophisticated. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's drawing. I definitely did. So, if you haven't subscribed, come and follow. Come and see what tomorrow's drawing's gonna be. Every day we've got new drawings. Every day we've got something exciting to talk about. Something exciting to draw. Like today's drawing. So, thank you very, very, very much for being here. Thank you very much for following. Thank you very much for supporting me. And just showing up. It's so good for you to just show up. So, I will see you again very, very, very soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Welcome back. So today we are going to we're going to do some color. Now, one of the things about color is that it especially when you're using something like watercolors is that you've got this balance of the amount of water is going to make a very light color and the less water you're going to have more pigment and more color. That's a very basic form of knowledge that you need to use. And as we're putting more water, we're going to dilute the color, okay? And as we put less, we're going to strengthen the color. Now that's a basic rule for users. And I don't like rules, but it's a it's a guideline for you. It's a it's a um, it's a base of knowledge for you for for this because when you want to do from a yellow to a red, the best way to do it is to be blending it in with your water, okay, or something like that. So the biggest thing you need to know about color is that it has to be fun, okay. You've got to keep that fun element to it. You got to feel the exploration part of it. And that's where your sketchbooks are fabulous because you've got all those drawings that you've been playing around with and you come up with some, some ideas and you've got drawings already in there that are dried and you can, you can practice your painting in your sketchbook. It's one of the best ways to learn, okay? Get your paints. Get your water, get your brushes, get your sketchbook, flick through and say, oh, that's quite a nice little drawing. And start to put some color in, start to feel some color. And it's a very gentle progress of learning. And it's one of the best things I can definitely say. And I do that quite often. I will sit there and I'll have some paints and I'll go through my sketchbook and I'll add some color and think about some concepts of color. And it's a really, really, really powerful way to get confidence. And I think that's a lot of it, is confidence. Confidence in what you're doing, whether it's drawing, whether it's painting, whether it's whatever. It's building that confidence, and that's what we need. 
So, today with our bird. Right. So, I'm, I've got this, this feeling of color. And the best approach is always to look at your drawing and think, well, you know, I can't do a blue bird because I might do a blue sky. Hmm. I can't do this because I might do that. What about if I do orange feet? Would the orange be a very strong orange? Well, if I do orange feet and I do brown wood, that's not good, is it? So I have to do a very light feet orange, a very dark wood. So a nice kind of thoughtful look at your piece of art before you begin is always a very, very, very good approach. So with my paints, just get some water and I spray down my paints. And I just give it a nice little spray just to so that it's all kind of waiting for me to jump on at any point. And that's how I start off this whole thing of just wetting down the paint. My brush is already wet. And I'm just trying to think of colors, where I would like this, what I would like. So let's just start, okay? And thinking about your approach. If you've drawn a bird that you drew yesterday, paint it up today with me. It's a good process. So today's request is from Annie. Annie has been a long time follower of my work. So we're gonna be painting up this lovely bird for Annie. And we're gonna start with a nice gentle yellow. And I love to do a lot of water at the beginning because I love to get some colors. Mm, that seems like a very dark brush. That's better. And I'm just trying to get a nice yellowy feel to it. And as I add the water, I'm adding this water to kind of get ready for a nice orangey tip to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the water, hoping it's going to bleed into. There you go. And it's starting to bleed in already. It's starting to bleed into the yellow that I've already done. And that gives a very nice soft approach to your painting. Now what it does is it gives this lovely gentle feeling. And as you go up in your tonal range from your yellow down to your tip, I'm going to darken up my red. And I'm going to let that bleed into it. And the bleeding in is a very, very beautiful way of, of working with the colors. It gives a very nice soft approach to it. And that's one of the beauties of using watercolors, this gentle approach. And again, I'm going to darken up around his eyes. And I'm going to use a brown because a brown's in that, that approach with reds and yellows. And, and I'm just going to bleed that in. around his eyes and again I'm going to try and bleed that using water I'm just going to bleed it I'm not quite sure why my cameras keep turning off It's very strange. It's like my, my cameras just constantly keep turning off. If there's a technical person out there, tell me what's going on. And the lovely way that with watercolors is this kind of blotchy 
effect that things just kind of bleed into one another. And I love that in the drawings. I love that in the color. It's a very, very vibrant way. I'm just going to add some more yellow in there just to vi bring up that. Lovely. And that's already got a very nice warm feeling to the character. And you can you can gather on more with your yellow if you wish. And give the rest of the beak that nice yellow tint to it. Because I want that to be a quite a a strong feeling. And I'm going to just blotch that in, hoping that it's going to bleed more and more. There you go. Lovely. And I must, I must say that my love for watercolors is a very mushy, blotchy type feeling to it. I love when paintings are very loose feeling and very kind of blotchy in a way and always have a tissue there just in case things get a little bit too wet that's when you know you got to add more pigment and less water okay just as a guide Now, you will find with my painting that because I haven't taped down the drawings and it's not on a watercolor paper, it will have this kind of blotchiness, a, a feel to it. It will have a little bit of a bend in it and a little bit of a... But again, that's part of what I love about the way the paint kind of finds its own area. So... Now, I'm thinking about a blue sky. Of course, I'm thinking about a blue sky. So I'm thinking about greens for the body. And I love this very, very lovely green feeling. And I'm thinking about a green and a blue tint or maybe like a purple tint. So I'm going to start down with the body. And I'm going to give myself a real nice bleed of greens coming in. Now this is really not a how to paint lesson. This is about getting rid of the fear of painting. This is about just doing it in your style, in your way. I find that sometimes when you watch too many videos, you, it kind of gives you this fear about you shouldn't do things this way and you shouldn't do and that's what I'm trying to get away from I'm trying to get to the point of finding your own way getting in and using some of the colors using the darker using the lighter where you feel and starting to get some of your knowledge across and the more you do it the stronger your confidence will be and the more you do it, the more you will enjoy it. Now, there's a lot of ways you can do things now. now. A lot of people are using digital painting, and I'm not so keen on it. Sometimes it's good. And on uh, on one or two of the Cat Cap um, illustrations, we did use some, some digital but I used it more in a kind of a touch-up way, you know? I'm just dabbing that paint in there, dabbing it in, going bop, 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 to kind of build up this kind of feather texture that we've got going on here. And I think that works really, really nice. Getting a little bit darker green on top to bring it down. So my advice to everybody is go and get yourself some paints. Even if you're terrified of paints, go and buy some paints and just start 
painting up in your sketchbook. And that's going to build your confidence. And that's so important. I'm going to bring up some more green here. I'm going to bring it up because I want to kind of have a darker base to it. Now I love the way it just fades away. There's something beautiful about using watercolors. The way that you can kind of just bring in, blend in darker colors. <laughs> He's already starting to look cool, isn't he? He's starting to you're starting to build your confidence as we're doing this. You're starting to feel like yeah, it's not so difficult. I'm doing this, I'm doing this. I'm building up a texture of my bird. I'm building up these kind of feather textures to him. And it's got this beautiful growing appeal to him. The more you paint it, the more you're going to love it. And that's so important. And remember, using the only the the paint when you want something a bit stronger and more water when you want to disperse it now i really want to try and bring some of that reds back into his chest and we're going to have to be brave about it you know that Right, now I'm going to start to blend it in. So I'm going to add some more water around this area. Softening down the join almost between the colors. That's a very gentle process. Building in your color, watering down the edges, softening things through. And now I'm, I'm definitely one of those type of people that I do not like to have so many rules about don't do this and don't do that. So... I will find that, you know, you don't use green and red, you know. Red and green should never be seen. What? Red and green are two of the most powerful, gorgeous colors on the planet. And my bird, you have to have the red and the green. Why? Because it's going to be a beautiful blend. Bringing that chest up. And just blending it gently, 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 working that in. Look at that beautiful big red chest that he's got. And Annie, if you're watching this, <laughs> this is for you. Beautiful. Bring it in some of your darker reds if you want to get some of that shadow underneath. And this blotchiness kind of comes into it, works its way through it. Lovely. That really starts to give me a feeling about this texture that we're building up here. And that's so exciting when you're, when you're doing these type of things. I'm looking for a blue that won't affect. But I love the way that we're using these these colors to blend into each other. And I would imagine if you were a bird out in the out in the Amazon forest or wherever you are that you would want to mo be the most bright color. You know, you would want all the if you're a guy, you'd want all the girls to be looking at you going, Woo, look at this guy. He is the coolest, funkiest bird I've ever seen out here. That's the guy I want to marry. You know? I'm just going to put some little touches there. Just to kind of... Lovely. Now he's already starting to have this, this elegant... Look at me. I'm so beautiful. 
And I love that about him. I love the fact that he is so confident. Now you can hear the brush just rolling over the very rough ink that I've put down there. Mr. Muir is getting all excited about something outside. He can obviously see a squirrel that I can't see. And there we are, we're just bringing those colors in. Beautiful. Not adding too much water at this point because I want the very vibrant colors at the end. Oh no. The saddest news has just popped up on my phone. Shane McGowan has just died. Shane McGowan from the Pogues and... Wow, my. What an amazing singer. That is very sad. That's very, 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 very sad. Well, we're dedicating our bird to Shane McGowan today. What an incredible man. Right, I'm just going to darken up some of the reds on the edge here. I want this to be a very dark edge to my feathers. Look at that blend. Lovely. And you see, I'm not putting any water at this stage. I'm Because I've put down all the base there and I've blended all the base. And now I'm going in and I'm just touching up some, some edges there just with the edge of my paint just to add a little bit of color. And I still love that. The same way that I draw, I like to have a little bit of an edge. I don't like everything controlled. I like to just explode. And that's exactly how I like to put the paint down. If the paint goes over the line a little bit, I'm okay with that, you know? It's about how the overall feeling comes across, you know? Lovely. And I'm just gonna to touch up again. Now that this part has dried up, I'm just gonna Bring in some of that more vibrant colors down, down through the feathers. Now, I think that's beautiful. That is so nice. Wow, poor Shane McGowan has had a very long career. I remember I used to listen to him on my Walkman up in, in the, on the Disney days. Going through my Irish music stage of my life. I'm really starting to like this. It's really, you can see how we're slowly building layers on here with our paint. And building these slow layers, and now I'm thickening up the paint again. And I'm going in and I'm just touching up some of those feathers just to really make them stand out. And it just kind of gives a real nice kind of edge to it. Beautiful. All right. Now please wash your brushes better than what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> I'm just a messy person. I'm a messy, terrible person when it comes to stuff like that. I, I get too excited about all of this and I just want to I just want to get in there and do the painting and do have the fun and But you know, it's like it adds to the the style of which I draw. Because I draw loose. I like to paint loose. And that's just 
each individual person, you know, everybody will be painting different. Everybody will be thinking different. Huh? <laughs> Lovely. So what about you? Are you are you a bit afraid of paint? Are you confident with paint? How do you paint? Do you use watercolors or gouache? What what kind of paints do you use? I always felt that the the watercolors kind of work really nice with with inks, you know. I've watched like Ronald Searle use watercolors and stuff like that and it's he's got a very soft gentle approach much softer than mine Lovely. now that's got a really really gorgeous I hope that's really picking up the colors the greens and oranges on there so now I've got to go a little bit into the darkers should I use a brown what do I got there brown I'm going to kind of I'm gonna put some blues into it. Yes. I'm just trying to dull down the, the color on the neck there so that it's going to push the other colors out, the oranges and everything, going to push them out. There's a very nice blue that I want to just test out a little bit. Yes, lovely. And I don't know why, but I, I fancy, I, I love this idea he's got eyeshadow on. It's like, you know, I'm out looking for a girl and, uh, <laughs> and I'm going to use my eyeshadow because I want them to see how beautiful and handsome I am. And I love this idea that he's got blue eyelid, eyelids. But that's, that's another part of painting when you're feeling it. When you feel this, this, this approach to your character. You feel something really special about it. And I'm feeling like he's on a date. You know, he's kind of like, he's all prim and proper and he's waiting for his date to arrive or something, you know. seeing that's recording so that is going to be a very 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 beautiful like makeup touch for him you know and I'm just going to use a little bit of diversity there with the color I hope if you drew a bird yesterday, when I was drawing a bird, that you're sitting here painting it today. That would make me feel so happy. If you have been doing that, please write and tell me. Even if you drew it in your sketchbook, okay? Get those paints out today. Lovely. So this handsome bird is out on a date. That's what we're thinking. Is that what we're feeling? He's out on a date. He's all got all his prettiness all worked out. See that that blue works really nice there on the on the collar because it kind of breaks away a little bit from let's go a little bit a little bit dark on this part just to make it stand out a little bit. Lovely. 
See, that's helping it so much already. And it's just by looking at your picture as you're going, thinking, well, that should be, could I add a little bit dark to that? Should I water that down a little? And slowly going in piece by piece. And you will slowly find that by watching your painting, by watching what you're doing, by talking through the process with your second brain, you will start to find that All the answers are there, you know. It's like, yes, I need to darken that that blue. Okay, find a darker blue and just touch the edges there. Just to make it so much of a more elegant like difference between that and the, the green underneath. And that's looking so beautiful now. Lovely. Very lovely. Oh. Right. Now, one thinking about what the head here. I don't know why, but my, my mind is saying that I should kind of flop what the body is doing for the head. That I should have green edges and a, a red head. Oh, my dear, dear, dear. You see how you have to. You have to listen to your second brain. You have to listen to what it's telling you. I'm just going to test that grey out. I've just got a piece of paper on the side there. I just test out the colour. I can't, sound, I can't seem to see a purple, but I just want to darken down the, the colours inside the mouth. Again, just to try and make the the yellow stand out more. Lovely. And again, I'm just going to go a little bit darker there. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow underneath that. Underneath that beak. Just to make it stand out a little bit more. That's much better. But color is one of those very, very, like you really need to kind of pay attention when you're using your colors. You really need to keep watching it. And we've just got a little bit of green underneath there. Just going to go a little bit in between those two greens because I want it to be a little bit of a darker feeling. And again, I'm just taking in a little bit of dark just, just to mix it up a little bit, just to, just to darken up a little bit. And don't be afraid to kind of jump between two colors. Like like there, I'm using that green, but I'm also using a little bit of that green because my mind is saying, darken up. There's a shadow there. There's a shadow underneath the bird. So make that a little bit darker. You know, kind of talking with your thoughts as, you, as you're doing it. And that works really nice. It's kind of like... It gives like a bit of a, a shadow feeling underneath the belly. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this. <laughs> right. Now I really want to find a really warm orange. And I've got, my eye is on this one down here. And the orange I want for the talons, you know. Like I want a, like a little bit of a yellowy orange, almost like the same what we've done with the beak up there, but softer. So it makes it stand out a little bit more. Well, that's quite nice. That's a lovely, lovely orange. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. Now, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to bring in that 
strong orange there and then I'm going to try to put some yellow on the feet underneath. Now in most cases I would probably say it's nicer to do the yellow first but I really wanted to see how strong this orange was going to be before I go too far with it. But I feel like it's really beautiful. And then I'm going to bleed in some of that lovely yellow. Oh, it's beautiful. Now that is really nice the way the yellows and the oranges bleed across there on the on the feet. Now see, if I had have done the yellow first, I probably wouldn't have been as brave with that orange. Whereas now I'm kind of using that yellow. It's really highlighting the whole beauty of the feet. Lovely. And then I can go in and touch up a little bit later with the orange. But that's worked out perfect. Look at the way those feet sit there, like that you got a 3D type of feeling about it. Gorgeous. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of orange there. I might even go slightly darker to the next orange up. Just see if I can kind of bring in some of those kind of wrinkles on the feet. That works lovely. Look at the way that's worked. Giving those wrinkles that extra little bit of orange. And again, we're just touching it in there, just touching it ever so gently. And by using that darker orange there underneath, it gives us little, almost like a shadow feeling for the bird being there sitting there beautiful oh my yes we're still okay and that just gives such a beautiful feeling then to the feet those big talons feel like they're gripped onto that and i'm just Blending that in, try and give a little bit more of a, a darker feel there to the, the feet that are just kind of wrinkled in. Fantastic. Oh, I'm loving that. Wonderful. Very nice. Right, so now I'm going to do the opposite with the head. I'm going to do the green as the, the feathers and the red as the actual head. Now, should I paint, paint that brown on the branch? That's nice. Now then, by choosing that soft yellow and then the orange gives it, giving it that 3D effect, then now with the, with the brown, I can just bring that in. And we can just do a few little few little lines there just to kind of give the wood effect and that should really bring it up lovely very happy with that going back into our brown on this side and again the, the by the choice of that orange it's really made the the, the wood stick out much more if we had have chosen anything darker, we would have been a bit stuck.
Very nice. Okay. I'm just going to slightly darken up to make the yellow stick out a little bit more. Cool. Again. So here we are <laughs> with our magical bird. The most fearful word in the language of art and we have almost conquered it. Look at this. Now we're gonna have to pay attention here as we draw all these long lines. Just giving it a touch of water because I don't want it to be too, too watery. I want it to be quite dark. I don't want it to be too soft. Lovely. Oh, yes. Good choice. Now you can see as we're, we're, we're painting, we're kind of gaining our confidence. And that's ho I hope what you're doing too. That as you're painting, these things down as you're going piece by piece. I just nearly fell over Mr. Miro then. <laughs> That's lovely. Just put a little bit more water on that, soften it down a little bit. And now we've got this beautiful contrast now with the with the body and then the head. Fabulous. Just painting in those, those kind of head feathers a little bit. Let's get a little bit more of the darker. And that has worked out really nice. I'm really pleased with that. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Now, I'm going to be very, very brave here. And just take a little bit of that, that orange. And I'm going to work that orange in. Around his eye shadow. and into those feathers. I think that's working really nice. That has come out so, so lovely. What do you think? We're, we're doing great. Now here's where you can have some fun. You can get all your water. And mush all your water around so we can get a nice kind of blue sky feeling here. And I love the way that the blue is just, it's just like a 
feeling of sky. You don't have to get too detailed with it. Just get in there and put a little bit of ink in there as well, just to kind of bring up some of those edges of color. And I always feel what it does is that the as you add the water to it, the water just kind of just gives it a little bit of a life to it. Just bring in some of that. And it just makes you feel like the sky is there. Beautiful. I'm just going to water down here and I'm just going to put a little bit more of a vibrant blue there. And that's such a beautiful feeling. And again, we're just going to bring that up. And that gives us a lovely kind of blotchy kind of sky feeling, which is such a beautiful, gentle approach to the whole, the whole drawing, the whole painting. And I love when watercolor's got that kind of gentle kind of blotchiness to it. That is extremely beautiful. Now we've got a little bit of a greeny blue there, bleeding into a sky blue. Lovely. So this is the beautiful bird that we drew yesterday. Do you remember? If you if you didn't see the drawing yesterday, go back and watch the drawing and you can basically see how we put this this whole drawing package together. Maybe if you didn't do it yesterday, you could you could do the draw the bird today and then you can paint it tomorrow. Now you've got all the video there. Whoa! That looks so cool. Right then, I'm just going to put a little bit of blue underneath the feet there, just, just to make it stand out a little bit. Wonderful. Well, that is today's painting of yesterday's bird. So please go back and see where we did the ink drawing for the bird, how the bird developed yesterday. And now, how we're thinking about putting the colors and how we've painted this bird today. I've just noticed a little bit of yellow missing on his beak. Lovely. So, please have a look at today's video and give me some comments. What do you feel? Am I too messy? Am I too crazy? Am I just perfect? <laughs> I loved today's drawing. I loved putting down the paint and I loved the whole process of feeling everything and just having fun, which is the most important thing when you come to color. Have fun. Forget about the rules. 
think about the fun. Think of enjoying the whole process and you will get to a much happier place. Okay? Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And I will see you again very, very, very soon. If you haven't subscribed, I would love to have you join the team. <laughs> and um, I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.